Hi there and welcome to episode, Alex, episode 169 of the ADHD Adults <laughs> Podcast. I'm James, <laughs> I'm James Brown. The man who pretends he can't process anything is co-host today. And I'm joined, as usual, by Dr. Alex Connor, who's more used to processing, oh, well, pickling, let's be honest, body parts. And of course, Mrs. Audi HD, who, as we know, has the auditory processing of a wolf alongside other senses. Alex, hi. What's my biggest weakness, James? It's probably not listening properly. <laughs> 169 episodes have made you laugh. <laughs> just before we started, Alex said, I'm really pleased with my hello. So while you were doing your introduction, I read it and could not stop laughing. <laughs> well done, Alex. That was amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Fair, fair play. Can we stop this podcast? Can we stop the podcast now? Is now you've, you've we've oh, come, yeah. funny joke. That's it. Things. 169 episodes <laughs> took Completed. him to do a good hello. Com- yep. This is your Completed. Sisyphean uh, punishment, I'm afraid. So no. It is. Anyway, how are you both, Mrs. Audio HD first? Um, same as before, really. Knackered, busy, um, mm. losing my words. Mm. Hello. D- dispelling the illusion that we don't record episodes same as last in, week. in batches. Yeah, same as yeah. last week, really. Not much yeah, not yeah. much changes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh the other one, how are you? I'm excellent, thank you, Ruth. Good to see you. We've got an Instagram page now for modern people. So social media. We've got a social media guy, but well, we've got James. And and he tells me that we have 20,000 followers or something. I don't know what that means. And this is particularly impressive because unlike Andrew Tate, we have a lot of gay ornaments. What does that mean? Andrew Tate Reese and his brother recently said they don't have gay ornaments in, our, in mm. the house. What? what? It's just the best thing I've ever heard. What does mm. that mean? We don't no gay ornaments it, it says it establishes his masculinity because he is according to him the the alpha male that men should uh, aspire to be you've told me like. about this man i have yeah. no idea who Let's he is move on move well, on move on all move you on. need to know no gay ornaments yes one of whom was sent us a letter the gay ornaments perfect <laughs> uh, yeah why not this <laughs> it's from a um from Robert from Kidderminster, James. Oh, says, my God, I thought he was dead. I know. It says, oh, it, is. it says, I listened to your last episode on the superpower debate and thought you should know that James used to cover his face and wear his underpants over his trousers and call himself to... Captain Kidderminster. He still he does. He's trying to solve the crimes. <laughs> and don't you dare. Don't you dare do that joke, Sam. You've just what? read the script. Are you ready? You got the idea from all the people wearing masks during COVID. <laughs> Uh, he goes on to say, because it was recently, you see, instead of being as a child as implied. Thanks, Robert. That's the that's the joke you've just spoiled, Sam. <clears throat> what was it we used to call Sam? The joke crusher or something. Yeah, yeah. It it doesn't doesn't matter, Sam. Uh, just to explain it to you, Sam, by saying he still does, it just right. meant the second part of Robert's letter became Punch redundant. Line, if you will. Because, yeah, yeah, if you will. Yeah, imagine that. Imagine you're delivering something that's been written for comedic effects, mm-hmm. and then yep. somebody to the side of the stage, if you're on a stage, shouts out something. Oh, I see what your joke yeah. is supposed to be. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yes. Same joke. Okay. 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 Yes. Sorry yes. about that. Carry on. All right, Captain Kidderminster, give it a rest. We've had a real letter. <laughs> Can I read it out? Please do. James get out. no yes I love it when you no. say no this is yes. from name removed but name it was removed. so mean about James even I can't read it out. <laughs> I'm like, can't I? no we instead of that we've got a, 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 a real letter from mm. and I'm sorry if I had to mispronounce your name but I think it's from Ewan McSweeney but it yeah. might be Ian I just wanted to say what a massive difference you guys have made to my life I've struggled understanding why I am the way I am my whole life Always had low self-esteem because I felt I didn't fit in. I struggled with anxiety, non-stop racing mind as I was managing lots of practical tasks like unlocking the back door. I've been through a few careers and I'm currently a teacher and a musician and a dad to two amazing boys. Two of my brothers got diagnosed with ADHD less than two years ago and told me about your podcast. The first day I listened, as well as laughing lots, I just bawled my eyes out. Mm. I, it was probably from Sam's bits, was it? I resonated with so many of your stories. That was I added. I resonated with so many of your stories and felt I'm not the only crazy person in the world. Laffy face. I never thought of myself as being ADHD because I was always the good boy in school, the people pleaser, etc. Doing well academically, but at a huge cost to my mental health. 
I'd always struggled with mental health and felt I was stupid or weird and not normal and didn't fit in. I'm 45 years old and literally had a conversation with my wife about this for the first time tonight. I was too scared to talk about it for a long time. But it's through listening to you guys that slowly made me realize I have ADHD and almost certainly autism. Even though it scares the shite out of me, I'm actually phoning the doctor tomorrow or maybe the day after I've procrastinated for two years. So that may still involve rehearsing every word on the phone conversation for an hour before I try to pick up the phone my face to make an appointment and hoping to go to a specialist. Anyway, sorry for my mad rambling, but just to say, I really appreciate the three of you. You've changed my life in a really positive way, and I feel you've empowered me to accept myself for who I am. Thank you. Thank you. That was oh, lovely. thank you, Owen. That was lovely. Um, Can I just ask the... Sam? You know, I left out the hearts. I didn't say the hearts. Did it bother you? <laughs> I was hoping it did. Oh, I wasn't. I wasn't really uh, looking at it. Sorry. Really yeah. just so you didn't that... get the. Thank you, heart, heart, heart. Yes. yes. That that would involve looking at the script, which she doesn't yeah, I forgot. Not good at do. that. I haven't I've realized now that the monstrous, the horrible, awful letter about me has been taken out that the next bit isn't going to make sense. But anyway, as <laughs> usual, this monstrous podcast co-host who single-handedly destroys the soft, timid confidence of his longtime friend and co-host. Hello. He clearly wrote that when the letter was included of a podcast. Here's the tragedy in three parts. We choose a theme. Last time around, we talked about superpower debates of ADHD. And this week, we're going to be discussing ADHD and auditory processing. Thanks to Stuart Hingley and Chris for suggesting the topic. The three parts include the Ricky Gervais trying to do stand-up of evidence. Oh, Alex God. Psycho. <laughs> Education monkey talking about the evidence around the subject. In part two, punch we'll lines. Personal... Just need punch lines. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, all, all actual You loved jokes. him. I thought you loved mm -hmm. him. I, you yeah, said you not, love him. Let's not go down that road now okay. because we're yeah. recording a podcast. Um, why? Why? And, I don't Oh, my God. You know I don't know current events. Okay, carry on. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just now I don't even know where I am. Um, part two, we'll give our personal reflections and tips on uh, auditory processing, and then we'll finish off with questions for Gabby Logan. So... <clears throat> Alex, your yes. voice itself is hard to process. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it, is it? Oh, I see what yeah, you've yeah, done. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, we did an episode on sensory processing ages ago, episode 84 or something. As a quick reminder, sensory processing disorders are impairments in responding to it. The sense, obviously, sensory stimuli, uh, detecting them, interpreting different smells and sights and sounds and tastes and hormones and all sorts. That's too many words. What we know is that some people struggle getting the information into their head, whereas others get the information into their head absolutely fine at words or text on a page, but the brain doesn't interpret that information in the right way or the way that they need it to. Like, for example, when I said the words, make me a cup of tea to James, and he must have processed that in his head as, make me a cup of the strongest gravy looking motherfucker you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> It actually put chairs on my hairs on my chest. Chairs on my head. Chairs on your head. Chairs on. I'd like to see chairs that. on my head. <laughs> Sensory processing issues in general are quite common in neurodivergent people, such as us, and can include having high thresholds or low thresholds for just sensory information coming in general. Thing, whether uh, mm. it's it's sight, looking at James's face, for example, or sound, or touch, or temperature, like touching James's face when he's asleep. <laughs> And blah, 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 your coffin's comfortable, etc. Yeah, shush. <laughs> the auditory system, Jimmy Sixpants, is responsible for processing the information that comes to the brain by the ears. Solid biology. And it ensures <laughs> that we can detect and discriminate sounds. It, we separate background noise, understanding, and then recognizing sounds as familiar. Lots of other things as well. The sound waves reach the ear and they travel to the inner ear and tympanic membrane, the eardrum. And there's lots of intricate bones Boom. and structures that <laughs> amplify those sounds in a way we're not going to go into as we've lost enough listeners already with science. Although the bones are called hammer, anvil and stirrups, which I love because it sounds like a firm of horse lawyers. <laughs> and then there's an ear nerve, the auditory nerve, sends the nerve impulses to the auditory cortex nucleus or nuclei plural and what does that do what does what do the, that's is that a hearing joke <laughs> right. serious seriously no well <laughs> james 
The auditory cortex nuclei processes the information. It's a bit of the brain. The clue is in the episode name. <laughs> After we process the auditory information, it passes on to the information that passes the information to the speech processing areas of the brain. What's that speech our brain has to ask? So what the brain has to do is it processes sound based on the main three areas of intensity, spatial location, and frequency of sound waves that it receives. But just like when we're trying to avoid SAM, that can be described as how loud is it? Where was it coming from? And how high pitched was it? <laughs> be a good time to do your screechy impression of Sam, actually. Yeah, I, 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 I've never done that in front of. Yeah, teams. no, and that's bec that's because <laughs> that's because you've edited the script to directively tell me to do a screechy impression of Sam. Yeah, I haven't noticed that and thought it was a question that I've written. So yeah. I thought that doesn't make sense because he's never done a screechy impression of yeah, Sam. But at the time I wrote the script, I do clearly there must have been a clearly there must have been a reason for that. So hmm. as it just says, doesn't it? Do your screechy yes, impression of Sam. It's, yes. Which I, I you know, know. is Stokey yeah. screechy impression of you that doesn't yeah. sound anything like when you weren't when you weren't there for an episode. Oh yes. You or oh, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't. Right. I'm going to do it, Sam. No, I'm not going to do it. Um, do it. Yeah. Um, essentially, there are wild amounts of noise and sounds and sound waves of all different amplitudes and frequencies coming into our ears all the time, yeah. especially at James's house. You see. <laughs> So auditory processing is vital. It's how the brain makes sense of all of that and chooses what to ignore and what to focus on and process. It's several stroke many complex brain processes, neurological processes that are now allow us to, to recognize sounds, differentiate and understand all the different auditory information from speech, environmental sounds, music, and the bafflingly popular wailings of Derek Bowie, for example. <laughs> Oh, God, it's blue snot out my nose. I hear, nice gag, that auditory processing disorders are a thing, Alex. You think I hear is a nice... That's yes. a terrible one. It's episode 169, and that's... You can't write or don't, deliver... Don't, don't sit on the fucking elevated castle of one good hello in 169 episodes and then use that to look down on my, my, my shambolic little pun there. Captain, I did a good hello once. <laughs> the elevated castle of one good hello. Beautiful. Yes. Right. Auditory processing disorders when you have normal hearing but find it difficult to understand spoken messages, for example. Um, maybe they're complex or seem complex or are under noisy conditions. These are disorders and they're more common in children. So two to five percent of children have got an APD, auditory processing disorder. And also in older adults, so as many as two thirds of older adults have issues with auditory processing. If you're an individual with suspected a APD, this, this might be understanding spoken language when there's any competitive noise around, or um, you might be someone that's frequently asking to have that spoken information repeated, you might have difficulty in paying attention, you might be easily distracted, have difficulty in following complex auditory commands, have difficulty in locating where sounds are coming from and have other learning difficulties. Pretty familiar. This can make everyday life really difficult. If you've got an auditory processing disorder, it can be obviously difficulties in telephone conversations, following directions, complex information, learning languages, so on and so on. So people with APDs because they have issues at work and their social lives and even at home, it is also possible that these listening problems <clears throat> negatively influence mental well-being. And what about the thing, Alex? All right, Bob. I'm getting to ADHD. I like saying ADHD. Well, James, individuals with ADHD, Bob, I can't anymore, often exhibit difficulties in processing auditory information efficiently. So we do display problems processing. Is this an ADP? That's the question. APD, mm. sorry. So these challenges we face are not due to hearing impairment, uh, impairment specifically, although we well, we are also um, uh, subject to being deaf as well. But auditory processing challenges are not due to hearing impairments in this case, but are related to the brain's ability to process and respond appropriately. This can happen in loads of different ways with ADHD in communication and learning and social interactions, just like for anybody else. With an APD, this can mean comprehending and retaining spoken directions, 
complex length, all the things for anybody with an APD, it's hard to filter out irrelevant sounds and it's hard to stay on task, just like it is with ADHD in general, hard to distinguish the difference. So there might be a lag in processing and responding to the auditory stimuli, to the sounds, rather than a problem processing them with more uh, a delay. It's that slower reaction times in conversations and other auditory tasks listening. This can result in misunderstandings and the need for repetition of information. So that does happen. So what can we do about it, Alex? Not the other Alex. You, know, um, you the one that theoretically knows what you're talking about. I don't know. I'm not going to ask. I'll ask later. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Auditory processing difference in ADHD is a combination of approaches tailored to the individual. It's not, there isn't a one size fits all for this. Mm. There are, you can ask for stuff like reducing background noise, there's environmental modifications like that, asking for quiet workplaces, minimizing distractions. It's very hard to tell sometimes whether it's the ADHD or it's audio processing problems or it's ADP because of ADHD. So there are structured programs to improve specific auditory skills, or that's the plan anyways, targeting exercises and activities and speech, and language therapy. So if you need help, there's help out there. Interestingly, pharmacological drug treatments for ADHD may indirectly improve some auditory processing, enhancing overall attention and executive functioning. For instance, there is evidence that methylphenidate Ritalin use is associated with improvement in auditory processing and the abilities of sound location and memory for sounds in sequence, auditory closure, um, which I can't remember what it means. I was going to explain it and now I've forgotten. And what is auditory closure? Can you remember? No, not a clue. Yeah. So, so I'll forget that one. I'll have to go and look it up. So all of the, a lot of the issues of processing sound, if they took methyl pen mm. in the day, which Italian is the short term one of that. This seemed to be helped. And what they don't know is if it was helping auditory processing or the auditory processing problem was because of those executive function deficits in ADHD. There you go. And that would be lovely if people could get hold of methylphenidate at the minute to help mm -hmm. them potentially with their auditory processing. That's enough of your auditory output, Alex. We'll take a break and we'll be back in part two for some reflections. I've forgotten what part two is. See you in a bit anyway. Bye. No. Alex, hi. Hi. What's up? Hello, Governor. Welcome back to episode 169, Ding, of ADHD <laughs> Adult, of the ADHD <laughs> Adults podcast, where we're talking about ADHD and auditory processing. Yes, I forgot the name of the podcast. <laughs> Fuck off. Well, we've only um, just started, haven't we? So... Well, it's part two. Um, we're talking about personal reflections and tips here. James, go. I um, I did miss. I did miss this. You know, in, in during during the break, just I did miss just this. It's utter, utter shambles. Anyway, um, normally, obviously, in this bit, I say, yeah, that's me. You know, I've got that it really badly worse than all you lot because you know I've got all the things and for. For, for a while, I was about to say years, but it's only really since I started thinking about ADHD and was aware of this, I thought, yeah, but that's not an issue for me, is it? I, I don't have a problem with auditory processing, you know, I haven't worked in busy offices and and, and you know, been to pubs, two examples I can think of. Didn't think it was a problem. Um, but then when I actually, actually thought about it, fucking hell. I mean, it's a biggie. We mentioned, Alex mentioned, I think in the last episode, I can't remember because we definitely don't batch record three episodes at a time and it, and it all becomes, uh, <laughs> it all becomes Monday a mishmash of, yes, exactly. <clears throat> um, but Sam's family came down to visit recently and I fucking love Sam's family. They are the funniest, just most chaotic and wonderful group of people. It is. She adopted. <laughs> Have you seen her face and Dave's yeah, face no, and Gaz's face and her dad's not. face? Yeah, no. <laughs> she's not. They came down to visit and, you know, I just, I knew we were going to have a lot of fun and it got to a point and she brought down um, Zachariah, her nephew as well. So we had almost the whole family there and Sam's brother, David, 
picked up one of my guitars and was playing it. And, and I went Sam's, and got some wigs. Sam got some wigs and Sam was entertaining Zachariah by making very loud kind of brrr and other noises. <clears throat> and Sam's brother Gaz yeah. and her dad were shouting each other over this and the television was on. Dave and, was playing the guitar. And uh, yeah, Dave was playing the guitar and I, I I absolutely fucking lost it and couldn't cope. And I feel guilty at saying this, but I just, I recorded some of it on my phone <laughs> because I, I almost needed to, to, I don't know, just to document it. I couldn't, the impact on me was massive. It wasn't just that I, I couldn't pick out what one person was saying. It was genuinely distressing. It was distressing in an environment where I know everybody there, you know, is full of love and enjoyment and happiness. But there was so much noise, so many different noises all going on at once that I I couldn't cope. Um, now, I've, I have got tinnitus in both ears, various different frequencies. And I don't hear very well out of my left ear from listening to Derek very, very loudly. Uh, it seems to make it worse. But it's the first time that I've really, truly understood, I think, when Sam has said to me, that, you know, for example, a single noise or lots of noises or the television or something else going on has been distressing. It wasn't necessarily that I struggled to process stuff, but the, the just the mass, the, the swell, the tide of, of auditory information that came in stopped me from being able to function and actually made me really anxious and upset and like I had to escape but obviously felt like I couldn't escape in my own house because of people pleasing I've never had that response never had that response before to that much noise going on I bet you and I don't know I bet you've just forgotten I bet it happened last week <laughs> Well, listen obvi obvi obviously it might have and I spent lots of time with Sam's family but normally I say never before. Maybe when uh, Jurgen Klopp's goodbye, the same thing happened, didn't it, actually? So actually, yeah, about three months <laughs> before this happened. Yeah, the last few months. In the last few months. Every time he sees my family. I, no, 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 no. It's, no, I was trying to watch the coverage of Jurgen Klopp's goodbye and Sam's family were there doing the same thing again. And, and because I was trying to focus on one particular sound as opposed to just sitting there slightly stoned, listening to things that was a different feeling though that's what's interesting i was desperately trying to pick out one thread which was what was being said on the television amongst yeah. a lot of other noises mm -hmm. and that was a different experience to so just having seven different overload. types of loud noises causing sensory overload so that for me it's only something i've recently realized that i do struggle with probably because of the fact that i've only actually seen other than the little talk do you know i do little talks oh i know little talks yeah yeah um somebody uh, on the instagram the other day said that you do medium-sized talks which i found very fucking offensive <laughs> that it's a <laughs> larger <laughs> size <laughs> um but it's other than those yeah other than those little talks it's because i've only actually been in the presence of six people in the last four years so i probably don't have you know many opportunities to have that auditory overwhelm but yeah oh my god that for me was a, a a really difficult moment my tip alex do you want it do you want i do it? want your tip okay control your Anyone? environment as much as you can i was i expected one of you to ding away obviously didn't have to control your environment as much as you can and what that means is <clears throat> it's okay for example, I'm going to spoil the sounds of flexion. It's okay to tell your husband that, that the sound of him eating makes you want to scratch your eyes out. It's okay to, to wear noise cancelling headphones or, or noise reduction headphones in environments where actually that amount of noise can be distressing. James, and let me just challenge that. Yeah. How did how did you feel about genuinely? How did you feel about yeah. the thought of wearing noise cancelling headphones when that happened? Because I've started to do it, and I felt hum embarrassed and ashamed and insulting to these people. But I have to. How did so he was talking about me wearing yeah, noise cancelling headphones exactly. while he eats. It's, yeah. Ah, but how would it's you have the, felt putting them on, sticking them on like proper, like I do? I th so how would I feel? Depends where I was, and you know me. With, I don't in the in the in the in the in the with my family. When you're seven people around you, that's a good. Yeah, and that's a good question. Actually, I probably wouldn't do it. I and I wouldn't at first. 
And yeah. then I realized I didn't want to demonstrate to my kids that that's abnormal or stupid because yeah. I felt stupid and I'm normal. So I've started wearing them when I need them. And it does. Yeah. It See, weird. I don't have any problem with wearing them. With wearing them. Lot, I mean, mine are spells. Problems. They're really quite cool, but I feel, yeah. yeah. It's, it's um, a really good point, isn't it, that we don't feel right wearing yeah, them yet. It is. Um, I'll get back to my tip, if that's okay, because obviously we've just <laughs> defaulted nice. to other people talking. Um, it's a control your environment. If that means wearing noise reduction or noise cancelling headphones, and you've got the confidence to, as Alex now has, well done, Alex, well done, <laughs> then do that. But also, and this is really important, it's okay to step away. It's okay to walk away from an environment where you are struggling. It's okay to say to somebody, I'm so sorry, I can't hear what you're saying. Can we step away? Or it's okay to ask somebody in a more polite way, shut the fuck up when you're trying to actually listen to something else. It's okay to say, can you, sorry, can you turn the television down a bit? I, I'm, I'm speaking to this person or et cetera. So elicit as much control as you are comfortable with in controlling your environment if you find that auditory processing is something that's difficult for you. And on the on that note of auditory processing being difficult for people, Sam, have you got any reflections? Yeah, I was going to ask you, actually, if misophonia was related to that, but you've answered me now by saying yes. Hmm inadvertently um yeah i struggle with all of those things with with the being overwhelmed fuck sorry that was really loud for people i'm sorry i banged my it doesn't matter um i <laughs> yeah when you was <laughs> mm -hmm. i banged my it doesn't, oh, matter. Banged me doesn't matter i couldn't remember the name for this or this so it Again, doesn't audio matter medium <laughs> Sorry, yes. I'm sorry, yes. I can't. Um, yes, yeah, so when you were saying about you were trying to concentrate on one thing, mm. but there was lots of other noise, that I feel like that's me all of the time because every noise, whether it's a tiny mm. little noise of the electricity going through the house or somebody talking to me directly to my face, both sound the same volume. I was going to say temperature then, volume. And it's really difficult to point out which one I should be listen to, listening to because they're all the same. So it's it's a real struggle. But also being overwhelmed as well by lots of noise. Weirdly, all right, I'm all right with it sometimes. I think if I'm in control of it, I'm okay. And I'm okay with my family. I think just because I'm used to that, I've been brought up amongst it. But James loves playing music and bought amazing speakers for all over the house can't have them on he has to listen to music in his headphones because I cannot cope with the music being too loud but I wouldn't but if I went to a nightclub where there was no people so I could just dance without anybody being there I would love the music being on and dancing so it depends with me what kind of frame of mind I'm on and what the purpose is I think if somebody else puts music on it's just too much for me <clears throat> voice notes are a nightmare for me because I have what? to write what? them out I've got to write out then what the person has said to me, which is lots of extra effort on mm. my part, uh, in order to respond because I listen to it and think, I I don't know what they've said. And I like to respond to each point in a message and make sure that I've addressed all of the points. So I have to write it down in order to come back to that point. And there's been times in the past when I've pretended I'm fine with voice messages and I've sent them in return, but I'm writing out what they're saying and then reading it and making sure I do all the points as I as I read it all out. And it's just so arduous for me. It's a nightmare. Um, when I go to poll, the Ding. ending, um, I really, really struggle because there's background music on. So I'm I'm struggling anyway because he'll demonstrate a move and I can't picture things in my head. So I can't remember what he's just done. And even if he tells it to me, I can't really remember. And there's music on, so I don't really understand sometimes and have to get him to keep repeating himself over and over. Mm. And then I have to chant it over and over to myself to try and get, and I have such a nightmare with, with all of that. Weirdly as well, when you were saying about, there was some part in the um, educational mm. bit that Alex mm. did about um, something about deafness and that reminded me that when I did my autism assessment filling out the questions for that one of the questions was did people ever think you were deaf at any point and mm -hmm. I presume that must be to do with auditory processing but that's just yeah, a side note and, and ADHD is often really hard to 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 spot the difference 
between people who are um, deaf and people right yeah because i guess it's it, it depends on the reasons for it doesn't it so but yeah i turn the radio off in your car when you really need to concentrate just well that's just standard though does everybody do that? Because it, yeah. it makes me laugh every time I need to do it. Presumably that's everyone, is it? But if you think about it, it's yeah. weird, right? No, do no. But I have to no, have silence no. if ever I've got to concentrate on anything. So oh, yeah, I need no too. sound to concentrate on anything. I'm the opposite. I have to have, James if I opposite. really want to concentrate, I have to have music. Yeah. Oh, that is weird. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. but no, I'm the, I'm the same. And I can't remember anything else I was going to say now. Before we get a life oh, sorry, James. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not sorry, am I? No, um, I'm not sorry, Alex. Before we get to your boring bit, um, I just wanted to say something which I've forgotten, and I'm just waffling now until it comes back to me about sound reflections. The, the first was it fascinates me that everything being the same volume. And she, when she yeah, first said that, I thought that can't be true, but no, it's like every little noise. So she will again. It, and this is, I suppose, a manifestation of her misophonia. For example, I'll see her run upstairs and then hear her tapping the flush on a toilet, which oh. is, you know, but, but, you know two you doors. Know, the water carries 50, on running. Because the mm -hmm. water's trickling into the bowl from the cistern. She'll tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it. And, and I think, what's she doing? And then I think she could hear the water that was trickling into a bowl 25 feet away and, and behind a closed door. And I find that completely fascinating yeah. and i've forgotten i've forgotten the other point so alex you may yeah, i feel like i've got supersonic hearing i did have some tips but i can't one of them was well one thing i've always done is just hide in the toilet that's my best tip if, when, if i get overwhelmed by anything i just hide in the toilet no matter where i am the problem with with being though female other women think it's okay to just come in the cubicle with you and i'm trying well, to get I mean, like away people from you, you know presumably yeah, and I'm trying to get away from you. I need to be on my own. So then I say that I need a poo, but then yeah. some people don't mind if you shit in front of them. No. And yeah, honestly, it's a nightmare sometimes. And this is your but... tip for auditory processing, just so I'm <laughs> clear. <laughs> Tell people you're having a shit and go into a toilet cubicle. Yeah, but some people will come in with you. So. Oh. I don't know what to do. I haven't found a good one for that situation. But now that I know, I can say to people, I'm sorry, I struggle with auditory processing. So I, it's I better to tell shit. people, isn't it? Instead <laughs> of saying, I really need a shit. Can I've got a, a life me? hack for voice notes, if it helps. Go on. Are you ready? I do yeah. not listen to them. <laughs> yeah, I don't anymore. I used to. I don't do it anymore. I just respond saying, if you hold down the microphone and dictate, it will type out what you're saying and send it to me. So do that instead, please. Because oh. some people yeah. genuinely mm. don't want to type it out. You know, they, they might have problems with typing. But if you hold down the little microphone and you speak to your phone, it will dictate what you're saying and you can just send that to me. And then we're all happy. Mm -hmm. Alex, go. Has he frozen? Yeah, on purpose though. He's pretending that he's shocked by something I've said. No, there's no way you could hold. There's no way you could hold that face. I haven't frozen. <laughs> well, is something different? No. Yeah, it's been no. like eighteen months since we last no. recorded. We've all got different clothes and herring on. Herring. Herring. I've got different herring. Yeah, yeah. and Alex has got. <laughs> am I allowed to say that? No. <laughs> Why? Why am I not allowed to say? But you have. <laughs> Why? Why can't I say that? Oh my God! Is that not appropriate to say that you've got? <laughs> but you have. I don't understand what I've done wrong. <laughs> Do you think it's generally appropriate to share somebody else's medical details with tens of thousands, <laughs> if not hundreds of thousands, of people? Mm, I didn't think of it that way. Mm. I just thought it was like saying James has got a cold. Well, Sam's got crabs. Oh. <laughs> it, is a, it is a bit like that. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. I'm it's sorry. somewhere in between those two events. Anyway, there was an electrical storm that knocked it out. So we're carrying on as if nothing had happened. You might spot nothing the has. scene, but I don't, I don't, you'd have to be eagle eyed. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alex. I think I think at some point someone had said, "Go, Alex." I'm sure your reflection, which you've had no extra time to consider, um, let's hear it. My personal reflection on, and I definitely know what it's a personal personal reflection on mm. on auditory. 
you've actually written stuff down, Alex. On audio. You must have written it afterwards after we stopped yes. recording. Yeah, you've actually written loads of stuff down. Do you want me to read it out for you? Yes, Alex, please. reflection and tip. I have this massively from ADHD. That's, that's... I honestly <laughs> don't. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely don't do that. Um, no, I do. It's, it's as simple as that. I. I've all, I've said for years before I learned about auditory processing, James, and I cannot tell you how vomitous it makes me feel to say this. But I learned about I learned about it from from you from you from you from, you, from a person I know. I say person from a Dracula I know, and and it was years ago. But it, it was wild the idea that I I didn't know, and I thought there was something wrong with my ears. I've, I've often had to wear sunglasses indoors, a bit like you, but for different reasons. Um. A lot of dyslexic people have said to me, it's like the, the words are jumbled up when they're reading them. Well, mm. for me, when someone's speaking to me, even if I'm super interested, it's sometimes like the, the, the words they're saying are jumbled up. And it's so wildly frustrating. And I used to create a narrative that I wasn't interested or I was a, the kind of person that couldn't listen to someone or wasn't interested in other people. And none of that was true. I just really, really wanted to hear what they say. And I, yet I couldn't seem mm. to do it. And I felt so frustrated. And then with the ADHD diagnosis, I assumed it was just distraction, which, I mean, it could be. But I've started to think it's more than that, that I, I, I don't process oral information super well. So I think, yeah, I think I have this quite a lot. And it depends whether I'm tired and whether my symptoms are struggling or I've got anxiety. So it, it comes and goes, but it's, it's never that great. So, yeah, I, th I think I have it quite a lot. I love, and I love, and I hate this as well, because it, mm. it's about Sam, and I've told loads of people this. I love Sam's thing of all the volumes are the same, sorry, all the noises are the same volume, mm. because if there's a, a ticking clock in the room, I'm done. That's all I can hear, and even a mm. quiet one. And, and a lot of people who are neurodiversion have said to me they feel the same way, and Sam, I use Sam's thing, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. It's, it's all the same volume. We had a we had a delivery today, not today, obviously two weeks ago when we recorded this. And I no, sorry, today. And I didn't get to the door before Sam. He was and downstairs and I was up here in my office. I was downstairs, office. she was upstairs, and she came down and said, Did you not hear him breathing outside? <laughs> <laughs> he was quite a heavy breather. Mm. It might have been Darth Vader. No, it wasn't. No, he was a delivery man. Um, yeah, but you know they do. The he, Darth works. Vader delivers at Christmas. He, <laughs> he, he felt my presence. <laughs> Jesus, it's, I don't know so what I'm supposed really to do with that. I I just um let it wash over you, ding. Okay, is that a metaphor? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Oh God, that's yeah. amazing. Sam had to do metaphors in a coaching course. Can you imagine, Alex? Sam had to do metaphors. Uh... Pick your favorite metaphor. <laughs> I reckon she would have said, my, my favourite metaphor is that I am similar to a woman doing coaching who doesn't want to do metaphors. <laughs> no, I just said, I, don't, I really don't understand this. And they said it's important to acknowledge that not everybody does. They were very, very good, actually. Oh, yeah. that's annoyingly positive. Although somebody who I love on our course did point out when they said a simile and she went, not to be pedantic, but that's actually a simile, not a metaphor. Oh, and I love is... that. Yeah. <laughs> I know, can I, I can I can I just corral us back gently towards oh, yeah, Alex's sorry. Tip, ding? <laughs> sorry, carry and on. Alex. From chatting about the veracity mm. of coaching courses that we're doing or not. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, I, well, that's it, really. Yeah, oh, to cool. be honest, that's the most important bit. Mm. Should I we play just a game? Always had it. Oh, okay. Christ, please no. Yeah, no, we we definitely got time. Um, uh, obviously, there's no point mentioning the score because it's just it's embarrassing for you now. But this is related to when we went to Margate. So obviously, very recently, <laughs> because there's been no gaps in filming whatsoever. So it didn't happen this week. It happened uh, a few weeks ago. Now, it turned out to be a six hour drive for various reasons. Um, and that caused issues. So what did I kind of get wrong, if you like, before, during, or after this thing? So the first option, Alex, one is I wanted to poo before we went, but I decided not to. And then I had to really kind of crimp it in the last two or three miles because it was, it was coming out. That's option one. Did I option two not have a piss when i had the opportunity 
and then I had to pull over um, after driving past the services, by the way, and piss on a hill. And it, I pissed so much it ran over my shoes. Or option three, when we got to the services to charge the car, because it's an electric car and it can't make mm -hmm. the journey, and I connected it, did I not actually press the charge button? And therefore, the, one of the reasons it was six hours is we waited 45 minutes with the car not charging and then had to go and press charge. Ah, oh, this is such a hard one because it, all three of those are things that have happened to you. The question really is, is did they happen on this specific <laughs> trip? Isn't it? That's definitely happened to you. Probably this bloody week. Oh, that's good. I'm, I'm going to, I don't know. I have no clue. Mm. So I'm going to say the one I want it to be, which is I really love the idea of how furious you would be not having plugged your car in. Mm. So I think it's that. Yeah, it's not, <clears throat> obviously. Um, and I haven't done it before, but I've nearly done it before. But it was, it was the, it was, no, why not? I shot myself. No, 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 I didn't shit. I, I had the re the really big piss. And we, we, Sam really needed a wee, right? And I, yeah. de not deliberately, but I saw services coming up and she'd said, can you stop at services? And I thought, I need one as well. And I just drove past it without thinking, shall I stop at that one? I just thought, oh, it'd be okay. Oh, I've done that and then I was so time, desperate. We pulled, we pulled over in a lay-by and I, and I hid behind some bushes, but it was the biggest piss any humans ever delivered. Yeah. And because it was on a band, it then just started running down all over my face. And I really needed a piss and was just waiting. Yeah. Until we oh, got yeah, to the apartment, this. but then you had to yeah. run to the chip shop to get the keys. Yeah, it's an odd story. Anyway, I believe the scores are now something like 116,000 to seven. So, Do you remember when I was uh, miles ahead? I know, yeah. I know, I know. Those were the yeah, times, I've weren't they? lost like 15 in a row. <laughs> you really have. Okay, um, because nothing's changed and we're definitely not um, adding to this recording um, at a later no. date, we'll take our usual break and then come back to answer your questions. Uh, in part three. See you in a bit. Normal break. Bye. No. Yes. Welcome back to episode 169 of the ADHD Adults podcast. We're talking about ADHD and auditory processing in a, a wildly seamless stitched up mm. double episode because of electrical mm. storms and nonsense as always in part three we're doing this and that answering your questions talking about other stuff and so on and so forth we have a question i think sam's got it first sam have you got a question for us to read out i have yes it's not from me it's from ali and it says how do i get my undiagnosed oh, ADHD?" You. <laughs> you, th you think when i say sam's got a question for us you think I meant I'm just clarifying that it's not from just me. Just clarifying that you haven't written into the podcast asking a question for you to read out on the podcast. Yes. Incredible. It's from Ali. And Ali says, How do I get my undiagnosed ADHD 23 year old son to listen to your podcast? Tell them not to. I think he would benefit benefit greatly from listening, but he is extremely stubborn and doesn't like people telling him what to do. I tell him not to. I'd say it's not appropriate. They swear they are just awful people. Do not watch this podcast. Watch any other podcast. Do you know Gabby Logan? Not any other. Yeah. I don't know. Do you know her? No, but I really like her. I think she's good. Like a really consummate broadcaster. What personally? No, I've watched her on the telly. Oh, right. Oh, she's a good broadcaster. Yeah, I think so. Right. I wrote under this question on the script, Christ. Don't. Oh. Why would they want this misery <laughs> in their life? Yeah. <laughs> <Which> is... <laughs> but the, the reality of the question is that they're asking, they're asking, I guess, how to support them with finding their thing. What would you, what would yeah. you say to someone, James? And that, and that's a bit of a hospital part it, story. So we, I get asked this. You know, you know um, I know you do apparently moderate size talks. Medium size. Somebody so to be a medium size. You know, I do little sure. talks. Oh, yeah, little, 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 talk. little tiny talks. Little tiny talks. One of the things I get asked quite a lot that I have fuck all answer to is, um, you know, my son or daughter um, is you know, clearly has ADHD symptoms. I think they've got ADHD, um, but they just won't listen yeah, to. Yeah. They just they just leave the conversation. They storm out. They won't read any material. How do I get them to engage? And it's a really difficult thing to approach because unless somebody is ready to engage with the the topic they're just not going to and they're likely to be op oppositional or kind of avoid that possibility 
what I'd say for the podcast if, is if you thought it would help, have it on in the background, maybe. Yeah. If if you think that's something that could then seep in like sh- shit osmosis. Not shit osmosis, that would be... <laughs> An osmosis of shit. Past the, pass- the passage of shit from an area of high shit potential to a low shit potential through yeah, a semi through a semi-shittable membrane. membrane. Yeah, semi-shittable membrane. But... Semi-shittable membrane. Yeah. <laughs> It's, you can't you, make I, people do stuff. That's the thing, and probably no. shouldn't. No, it shouldn't. probably should be up to them to do what. I, I have the same question asked a lot, and I always say, simply don't. Mm. What, what most people need is for you to be there while they're figuring their life out, and not be too judgmental. That's what I needed. Mm. It's what I've always needed. Mm. Still yeah. do. So, yeah, yeah. But yeah. It, it is true. If, if your parents are, you know, listening to a podcast, you're not going to want to listen to it, are you? No, God no! Not, and, this, and, not this one, and especially no, not this one. It's a what hard sell anyway. If, if you're a parent asking that question, you're already ninety percent there to giving the right support. So if you think there's some advice you should be giving, that doesn't exist. Mm. So mm. just shut up and listen would be my advice, but not to this podcast. Literally any other podcast apart from that one. We know. Apart from that one, yeah. That one. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. All I, really have you obviously very supportive? They are yes, and that's lovely. Alex, do you have a question? Which I do have a question. Yes, I do have a question. But instead, I'm going to read out a question from someone else. I thought that might be more <laughs> sensible. Yeah. This one's from Anita, and it says, I'm listening to your episode on motivation from my home office while I'm supposed to be working. I think some kind of smile. Oh, it's a smiley face. I wondered, when having to do a boring task, does it help to do something random, such as drawing or a puzzle, to regain, get a little dopamine boost, and then get back onto the boring task? If so, I'm hoping the answer is yes. How to stop or regulate the time we spent on the dopamine boosting task? Any tips and ideas, James? Any thoughts? Stop or? I mean, that is a that is a hospital. Just use some. I have. I've got loads. Oh, go on then. Nobody wants to hear you. No, Sam, I do. (laughs) I just realised that you and I blathered the last time. We keep doing it. I really wanted James to. Oh yeah, that's true. Actually, yeah, James. It's okay. Nobody tunes in to listen to me. They tune in to listen to you. Sorry. I got really excited because I, yeah, I love this. I have like a list of little energy boosting tasks that I. How do you switch out of them? Yes. Mm. So that's what I was getting. James bought me something called a gravity timer, right? And let me switch it on because I haven't got it on. Um, and this might take a while so basically Mm. if you want to so say you wanted 10 minutes to do a task for you just put it like that and it's not working (laughs) it looks beautiful maybe that one oh shit hang on i've pressed it okay so that sets it for 30 minutes because i've switched it on 30 or if i wanted 60 minutes there (gasps) so say i wanted to do a work task for 60 minutes i put that on alarm goes off and then i might have 10 minutes for a little um, energy boosting task, or I've got five minutes as well. So five minutes, what I do in five minutes is I go out in the garden, I look at bees, I feel the Mm. sun on my face, I feel the air, I really love doing things like that. Or there's all different, I've got a list full of little things that I know that either don't cost me energy or they give me a little energy boost and then that can allow me to carry on. So that's me. That's really Mm. good. She she does. I can I can add very little of of um of value to that. But what I'd say is obviously we're all different. We are diverse as a neurodivergent population. So for some people, those little um boosts are important. I to, so for me it's a bit of music and maybe maybe it's definitely a cigarette and a cup of coffee. That's my kind of reset and that recharges me. And the, the issue really is that, as Alex said, and as Sam's given a strategy for, is that task switching. What I would say can help is movement. So if that energy, if the, if the little boosting, dopamine boosting activity involves you either staying in the same seat or sitting in a comfy chair, then that will sometimes, for some people, make it harder to switch back to task-oriented mode. So if you can do the task on the move, that can help because we know that movement is one of the most effective ways to task switch because you're, you're then dragging yourself away from that activity. So if you can do it on the move, great. Try not to do it too, somewhere too comfy, then use tools like Alex. No, not use tools like Sam's um, timer then. That's what I'd say. 
Yeah, that's a really good tip, actually, moving away, because that's something I'm really bad for. I don't I can just sit at my desk all day from like 4 a.m. until like 9 p.m. and not take a break and not eat or drink. No, you don't do that, do you? (laughs) Yeah, but you know that. So I've got a different problem here. I can't do it. If I do a different task as like an energy boost, I'm doing that for five hours, even with a timer. I just mm. get really angry with it and ignore it. Mm. So the only way, I, if I've got if I've got to do it and it's a boring task, I've got a couple of options. One is what Anita suggested is is if you're fiddling or drawing or something, or puzzling whilst you're doing it, mm. I'll do that. The other is to combine. T- if it's boring, like putting the washing or hanging the washing out, for example, I will have in my hand like a, a podcast where they're testing me on on latin nouns <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, it is true but also i said it because of james's face i wasn't going to say it but that's what i do even though it is or i'll prep i'll go through all the all the italian pronouns and articles i know or i'll go through all the kings and queens in order whilst i'm doing something boring but if it's a task where i can't whilst you're doing something boring <laughs> you're adding a boy you're adding a boring task to a boring task I'm to not, try and well, make the sum of two boring tasks less than two boring yeah, tasks. Yes, yeah, I am a little I agree with that a little bit, but it's two <laughs> it's two tasks that I both I want to achieve, both of them, and I get double reward. I call it double yeah. bubble in my head. Mm. But if the, if one of them requires a bit of concentration, even though it's boring, like doing my accounts, then what I have to do is get reward by thinking about who will benefit from how I will feel after I've done it. Mm. Like, you, you know, how much happier you'll be, James, if I'm happy, because that's how you thrive. <laughs> no, not you. But but Lisa, my wife, she, if I am like feel like I've achieved something, I'm a much nicer person to be around, mm. and that benefits her. So by, it's the same how I manage to, like, how I do things that are nice for me is I don't do them for me only. I do them for how I'll be as a parent, as a husband, as a you know friend to people. And, and that helps me because of the self-esteem thing. And so I try and do that a little bit as well. Yeah. Or, or do it somewhere else, change your environment. I, I, I know lots of people with ADHD that could not in a million years work in a cafe, because it'd be, but I can, so I get the mm. external validation. So have a think about who, do you not, who could do you be not around. Just have- do you not occasionally just have a wander and check the traps, see if you've caught anyone? Because that's like no, because they've got good, jingly good bells, haven't they? Oh, uh, have they? So you know, yeah, mm-hmm. fair enough. Excellent. Yeah. Well, by um, a state of very bad editing, the last question which I'm going to deliver, which again isn't from me, the fuck we think it was anyway. <laughs> it's just um, to repeat, it is, isn't from James. <laughs> it isn't it's from me. Easy. It's mm-hmm. not from me, but it does appear to be addressed to me. So that went wrong. So this is from Steve Howe, and it says, can I ask particularly, James, about the link between hypothyroidism, uh, Hashimoto's disease in brackets, that's a common form of hypothyroidism, and ADHD? I really don't know which condition I'm battling. Is there a simple way to understand autoimmune relevance to ADHD? Was I gifted ADHD when I got Hashimoto's? Can Um, I take this? Yeah, go on, Al. I don't know. (laughs) Sam? (laughs) Sam? I don't fucking know, do I? <laughs> oh, I. Okay, so as an endocrinologist and somebody that has hypothyroidism, I probably and fake can. professor. And fake professor and fake, uh, now fake doctor of science as well. So exactly, yeah. <laughs> Double shit doctor. Um, there's a, there is this weird link between hypothyroidism and ADHD. So the thyroid gland, which sits in your neck, produces thyroid hormones. And amongst other things, they regulate our metabolism. Now, hypothyroidism means that your thyroid gland is underactive. Therefore, it isn't releasing enough thyroid hormone to fill in its normal function. Whereas hyperthyroidism would be overproduction of thyroid hormones. What we know about this link, and there is a lot of evidence around this, is first of all, that if your mother, so maternal hypothyroidism, was hypothyroid when she was pregnant with you, then you have a higher risk of developing ADHD. We also know if you've got ADHD, you have a higher risk of being thyroid hormone resistant. So that means your thyroid hormone levels might be normal or in the normal range, but a bit like dopamine in the brain won't work as well on the tissues in the body like uh, muscle and and, and fat and bone and and nerves, neurons that they, they work on. Children who are hypothyroid 
have about 1.7 times higher risk of later developing ADHD. And we know that Hashimoto, so Hashimoto's is a form of thyroidism where your immune system, and this really should have been in next week's episode because that's on ADHD and the immune system. <laughs> it's where it's a, it's a condition where your immune system mistakenly attacks your thyroid gland because it thinks it's an invading pathogen. So it, it destroys like thyroid cells. Diabetes of the thyroid. Yes, like diabetes of the thyroid. Mm -hmm. um, not a mutant, not a mutation. That'll make sense next week, guys. Um, so what happens is your immune system attacks the thyroid gland. It the cells are produced. Um, I'm not going to go into it, but the thyroid hormones obviously then reduce because they're getting destroyed by your immune system and your thyroid levels drop. And we know, and we'll tell you next week, that autoimmune conditions are seen more often in ADHD, some of them, and Hashimoto's is one of them. So Hashimoto's autoimmune destruction of the thyroid gland is more prevalent in ADHD children and probably therefore also adults because it's not something that you kind of reverse by growing a new thyroid. It's just people haven't looked in. in presumably no one knows if that's like a coincidence or one co ADHD <clears throat> causes that one or that causes ADHD or it's just because if like social anyway, it, reasons. So, so what's important, Al, is that thyroid hormones are needed not just for neuronal development, but also for neuronal function. So if you happen to have a mutation, that you um, that developed when you were a, a fetus, which meant you could not produce thyroid hormone. That is co being called not compatible with life. You would not be born or you would be born with very severe um, um, neurological issues because thyroid hormones are, are needed for neuronal development. And that happens and from kind of week of four. No, exactly. Yeah. From, from week four of gestation through really to neurogenesis through to the early years of life, that's, that's when it happens. That would, you know, that wouldn't be happening. And therefore you would have significant neurological issues. So if your thyroid hormones are just slightly off rather than entirely missing, it's easy to see how that can impact the neurodevelopmental process. So you can see how hypothyroidism could contribute towards ADHD. I, the I other never been interesting before. This is a fuck off. Whole new the other, <laughs> the other way round is also interesting because um, the the thyroid hormone system, like many of our classical endocrinological systems, has three parts, and that's the hypothalamus in the brain, the pituitary gland just outside the brain, and then the target tissue. So the hypothalamus releases a hormone called. Um, uh, uh, a releasing hormone ironically couldn't even remember the name that goes to the pituitary and tells the pituitary to release a different hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone that goes to the thyroid and tells the thyroid release thyroid hormone so there's three stages wow. and one of those so stages exciting. remember the hypothalamus is in the brain and there is evidence that the hypothalamus wow. functions differently very very scant but a little bit of evidence that the hypothalamus functions differently in adhd so you can see how there's this bi-directional link between having low thyroid hormones could predispose to ADHD, but also having ADHD could impact um, our thyroid hormones. And we know does probably through shared genetic routes impact our immune system. I can see that, but I think if I'd been God, I would have just <laughs> done it more simply. I would have yeah. just done it in one step. It seems it's really ineffective, doesn't it? It's no. over complex. It's over. It's 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 magical and beautiful endocrinology. You mm. it insists lose. upon itself. I think. <laughs> I do love that. <laughs> Any thyroidism. Um, anyway, with seamless um, a presentation, without yeah. there being any gap, change of clothes, aging, not winning anybody, um, etc. Yeah, um, that was episode 169 of the ADHD Adults Podcast, where we talked about. ADHD and auditory processing. If you're still listening by now, um, good on you. You've yeah. really tried hard. If you want to get in touch, send us the letter or to ask a question, then the website is www.theadhdadults.uk. We will see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. Bye all.
So I've got a new line manager and I met with them recently and told them that I'm not essential. I don't manage my time effectively. I should be on a lower grade than someone I work with closely because that person's much better than me. I've got no ambition. I'm not bothered about progressing. I don't even want to manage the person I line manage now, let alone anybody else. Wow. That wasn't... What did they say? Why did I do that? They actually said, well, I see something in you and... I, it was all confusing, to be honest. It wasn't the... I don't know, but um, I don't know why I said it. And did you actually feel it or did you just feel it at that moment and now you feel differently? No, I no, I, I know I'm shit, but I don't know yeah. why I told them that I'm shit. I shouldn't have said no. that. We've got restructuring going on at the minute. It wasn't wise for me to say I'm not essential. I'm really shit. I shouldn't be on the grade I'm on. And I don't want to, I don't, I've got no ambition and I don't want to manage anybody. Not so even we, the person we, I'm line managing now, thanks. 